What is up, down and sideways, you beautiful creatures of this beautiful planet, Eric and Mark here with you guys for another epi of League Unlock. We got a little all pro LCS awards to get to from spring. We got to wait a little for MVP, but we got your first, second, and third team all pros. And for the most part this year, pretty good job from everyone voting, everyone that was involved. First, looking at that first team. Of course, it's mostly uh, FlyQuest and 100 Thieves because Cloud9 wasn't so good in the regular season. And that's the big caveat. We're not including playoffs. So Cloud9's 3-0 stomping of 100 Thieves was not taken into account for any of this voting. It is pretty crazy to have the last couple of weeks go through and see that performance, see that value for Cloud9 reach what was a lot of the expectations or at least that bare minimum for a lot of people, the firepower that they expected from that roster that doesn't matter when we're looking at this all pro list because, yes, this is about the time before we started to see that turnaround from Cloud9. And you're right. You're looking through that regular season. You are seeing FlyQuest and 100 Thieves. That has got to be the big power leading into that first pro all team. Of course, Whippo up in that top lane. You're throwing in a 100 Thieves pair of that River and Quid in the jungle, which, by the way, Quid. What a bounce What a turnaround. Whew. Insanity to see that this guy has been able to get here. I think that's a lot of individual work and as well giving uh, credit to the 100 Thieves organization for fostering this type of growth, this type of path for this player to get to this point from where we started at. You go to the bottom lane, and here's your surprise. B-Voy, Shopify Rebellion, B-Voy. When's their playoff in. matches? Uh-uh. I don't care. My man B-Voy is rolling in. Is that number one spot? And you know what? I like it. I like this one for this one. And again, I was number one. I was on that train hating on B-Boy coming over to the LCS and being in that starting spot for Shopify Rebellion. He has proven myself and a lot of the doubters, a lot of the haters very wrong in this first split in the LCS. We were ready for him to be benched by week two, but in the end, it was Wild Turtle actually starting. He's the one who gets benched, and then B-Boy says, ah, watch me go ahead and get first team All-Pro. And if you think that's crazy for a seventh place team to have a player on that first team, watch some of the VODs of B-Boy this split. He was out of all the 80 carries in the LCS doing the heaviest lifting with maybe the least to work with in terms of a squad around him. He was first in damage percentage, gold per minute, and listen, being first in gold per minute on a team that finished seventh, it's easy to have the most gold when your team is dominating and winning nonstop. When you're losing and you still have the highest GPM, that's a true sign of a guy who knows where to get his money. Yeah, B-Boy making, making it happen in the LCS for Shopify Rebellion. Not fully, right? We need to see that full power from the rest of the lineup to get over, I think, what is going to be that playoff hurdle for Shopify Rebellion. But right now, that b -boy popping off and looking pretty darn strong in this one. And that is also a comment you will say, I think, about what else we saw from the ADC position in the LCS this split. 100%. It was a bit underwhelming, the pool as a whole. A lot of that has to do with the meta. But far and away, the most impressive stat for b -boy is Smolder games played? Zero. And my guy's on first team all pro without the Smolder buff. Okay, that's... That's actually impressive. And this is the LCS where we got into the smolder action right away. You know, live patch situation. Pretty crazy to think that your boy B-Boy's putting up all those numbers looking that good. And he wasn't out there abusing that smolder dragon pick. Uh, so, yeah, Busio definitely deserving the support spot. No problem with Whippo in the top lane. River and Quid were definitely the best mid-jungle duo. When this 100 Thieves roster was built around quid double lift busio leaving the rest of the squad everyone's going you're building around this guy he was so underwhelming and now we're sitting here he might get mvp quid and river might take some votes from one another but in the regular season 100 percent he was the most consistent mid laner and the most impressive thing to me was eventually when it came to azir being banned out globally we didn't see that dip from someone like quid it wasn't just that one trick it wasn't just the comfort of that azir champion He's able to been able to do it this split on everything that 100 Thieves has asked him to play. He's been playing at a high level for them. This really has been that de development, that growth story that a lot of people hope for when you saw this initial reaction, the initial signing of bringing Quid over and what this project was going to be. And especially not necessarily having the biggest trust in an organization like 100 Thieves to foster that development for a young international player. So to see that, very happy to see for 100 Thieves. 
rounding out these second and third teams. Second team, you got Impact, Inspired, Jojo Pion, Berserker, and Ayla. Pretty fine with all of those, except Berserker, was he really the second best AD carry in the regular season? I don't think most people would have probably said that. No, I don't. Now, I will say I don't think there's a ton separating what is going to be a second team All-Pro ADC and the third team All-Pro ADC. No stand ADC. Really. Right. So that is more so the comment on the situation. And I think that Berserker does find himself here based off of name. That gets him into this type of position, this type of attention compared to what, I mean, was the very relatively weak performances that we saw from LCS ADCs. You look at the rest of the second all pro team list and you're still thinking to yourself okay even with everything that we saw this split in the mid lane and even as good as quid has been you got a guy like jojo pian with middling performances nipping at his heels for that first pro team that's the type of level that jojo pian stepping into and again we got the head-to-head in playoffs and uh it's a bit of a jojo dip in the mid lane but regular season only uh really even when you look at this third team Top jungle and mid, I feel like top three, kind of hard to argue, pretty locked in when you throw in now Sniper, Blabber, Jensen, then Masu and Vulcan in the bot lane. It's really AD carry support where you're sitting up for debate, and that's not because, again, there were so many standout performances. We're now sitting in an eight-team league that has Vulcan and Core JJ, and were either of them really top three levels? (sighs) No. No, I didn't I didn't see that either. I think that's another one where Vulcan, just like his counterpart in the bottom lane, Berserker, is getting a bit of that boost from the name, from the experience that you've had in the LCS claiming this third spot. Has anybody from any of these other squads really provided that difference that you want to say you want to take them ahead of them? Like you mentioned, a core JJ. I don't think so. I don't think that that's going to be anything that you're really deciding it with there. I think when you're looking at this one and you're looking at the overall picture of it, I think it's nice to see Jensen included in this one. I think that he as well has, you know, had some question marks about what his return to the FlyQuest roster was going to be. And he has answered them pretty darn well and pretty solidified at the LCS level. General Sniper finding his way onto this one really early and really comfortable position on the third all pro team behind someone like impact behind whippo i really think this is a good stepping stone good early split for him in his career twice as many solo kills as anyone else in the league and all pro nod in your first ever split pretty damn good start to his rookie campaign uh maybe would have wanted to see fbi or tomo over guys like masu or even berserker but that's really the only gripes to have with these lists Yeah, and I think that at the very least, I like that, you know, the last week we got in the regular season for Masu was a good one for him with FlyQuest. I think we started to see a little bit of those signs of that development, a little bit more that we could trust what was going to go on for this FlyQuest bottom lane in the playoffs. It wasn't going to be as much of that question mark as we had feared. That was the initial sign. I think that that big last week is what you find Masu in on this third All-Pro. It was a bit of a bizarro world kind of day. Over in the LPL, it doesn't matter if the Shy is on the roster or not. Weibo Gaming wakes up and sees JDG on the schedule and some kind of switch is flicked on everybody on the roster because now they move to three wins in a row against JDG. Going back to the super team JDG from last year and they do it in 2-0 fashion, including a 23-minute stomp in game two? You tell me anybody is stomping JDG in 23 minutes. I'm not believing you, except for Weibo Gaming. They are the exception. Six and eight Weibo Gaming. They are the rule breakers of all time Weibo Gaming. And man, was Mr. Shaohu breaking some rules out there and breaking some hearts on the JDG side. We've been talking about this one for Weibo Gaming, where we didn't know where we can really have any faith in judging where their power level ranks what type of team they are in the lpl until we see number one the shy possibly return to the lineup and number two have shaohu deliver the performances that he has built the name of his career off of because we hadn't seen those signs this year just yet this is it this jdg series in a whole nutshell is just exactly what you needed from shaohu to step up to that type of level i think there is a conversation about what happened on the JDG side, but it's almost so hard 
life to get a grasp, get a handle on what exactly went wrong because it happened so fast in this series. Because not only is it that first game, which yes, it did go more or less normal type of distance of time. He had a little bit of pushback, but still that control, that power, that clutch factor for someone like Shahu game one. And then game two, it happens in a blink of an eye. It's over. And you're not used to that seeing that for a squad like JDG. Well, game two's peak Xiaohu top lane because he gets to play the Tristana mid, which is something we've been waiting for. This was far and away his best series in 2024. He's been underwhelming for most of them since then. Lethality Varus in this series, it's a case in point not to be doing it. Especially Ruler, he couldn't do anything past 30 minutes in that game. He didn't do any damage. No, he, he was not going to have a chance at that point against what was there. Man. This is exciting to talk about this one for Weibo because this is the last little thing that you would have expected as we're closing things out in this LPL. They still need game. wins to even make playoffs. Yes, they do. And this was one that you were not counting on getting against a squad like JDG. Very powerful stuff coming through for Mr. Shahu. Seven and eight now. Sitting a lot, whole lot prettier uh, in terms of that playoff picture. Upsets didn't start there. We had already finished... We had written pegged in FPX at 12 and 4 with an easy schedule, but Milky Way matches up against RNG, the squad that has his contract. And he must have said, Oh man, my stock's pretty damn high. I better I better peel it back a little bit because all of a sudden RNG looks like peak performance from a couple of years ago, and FPX looks like what everybody thought they were gonna be at the start of the season. I'm already seeing people calling this one Oscars night for FPX, putting on the performance of a lifetime to make sure RNG's thinking and looking to themselves, man, why do we need Milky Way? We got Way, we're rolling. We still got players like Breathe and LWX. They're able to turn back the clock and pop off. We're five we're and good. 10, we're coming for playoffs. <laughs> That's gotta be the only way to copy on this one. I think overall, this is a slip up. This is a mistake from the side of FPX, right? The overall performance and, and preparedness on the day. You do got to look at RNG. And that's what I said in that statement. Breathe LWX. That's all you got to know about this series. Those two players have certainly been name worthy, notable players over the course of the L uh, LPL's history. They give you a quick dosage, a quick reminder of what they are capable when they get those resources and they get that power. Even, I mean, we often see this towards the end of especially the LPL split or these kind of upsets where truly seeding doesn't matter a ton, especially that like 5 to 10 zone. Uh, so teams maybe a little bit more loosey-goosey on the rift. Even top esports today. Usually Jackie Love and the squad start a 7-0 and Draven. This game is over by 20 minutes. They had a little bit of fun, almost through a game, but Jackie Love did bounce back with a quadra. So they at least broke up the upset day. Only, you know, if we had the only Weibo could pull off that type of win against JDG, only top esports could find a way to make it interesting or possibly throw the game when you had a player like Jackie Love even, not just a Draven ahead like that. Yeah, Jackie loves Draven ahead like that is one of those type of things that you're looking at. The quick last thing to touch about with FPX, not overly concerned about this one. I think one of the things to keep track of was, again, a relatively pedestrian performance from Milky Ways, a rising star with this team. So certainly someone that we want to see start popping off more so uh, than we're tracking just the FPX overall power level that we're seeing there. And as you mentioned, you look at top esports, and this is where it gets into that time, that final week of the LPL closing out matches. You get a little wonky. You get some things going on like that. And number one, getting that Draven out ahead that quickly like that, that was wonky. And to have those type of team fights later on where the Draven needed to be the clutch factor, also some wonky top esports stuff going on. The craziest stat for them still is they have one less win than JDG at 11 and 3. But their game score, they have five less losses because, again, they just don't do game threes. They're allergic to them unless it's one of the best teams in the league. They're 2-0 in everybody. They look pretty safe for a top three finish. They're the all or nothing squad is really how it is on the day. You're either getting the full on top esports treatment and they're going to bring the full throttle, the full velocity at you. Or you're not, and you're going to get a relatively underwhelming performance on the day, and it'll be a quick 2 up. End of the regular season in the LCK, end of the round robin in the LEC. LCS playoffs are back. We are heating up to get the climax, the absolute peak 
of the spring season. And we'll be back to break down all the weekend action. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll catch you on that flippity flip.